what's up everybody welcome back to the second street marvel i hope you're all having a very good day today um it's monday the beginning of the week right man hard to believe we're already there um i, I apologize so much for the uh, for the delays here on the stream i'm not sure what's going on here i mean let's go ahead and let's go ahead and blame it on youtube right isn't that what everybody does we blame it on youtube and say oh it's the algorithm oh this isn't working oh that isn't working it's youtube's fault yeah anyway Thank you all so much for tuning into the Second Street Marvel today and the morning movie chat. Now, uh, as you can see, I am a little bit late because of these technical difficulties, which, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and blame those on YouTube. But if you could do me a favor, make sure that you give this video a like or give it a dislike for all I care. You know, it's all it's all good. I you know I greatly appreciate your interactions either way. Make sure you leave some comments down there. And um, today I want to talk about something that. Uh, you know, I, I guess I guess it's good that it was kind of slow getting here and getting everything, uh, get, get getting everything off the ground because you know I'm not sure how much I really have to go through and, and talk to talk to you guys about today. But you know I do have plenty of things that I want to talk about. I'm not sure if you guys seen the thumbnail that I got there, but there are definitely some things uh, to discuss here. Um, and that's family films. You know it seems like there's more and more, um, you know, le or less and less uh, really great family films out there. Or is there? Are we just not paying attention to them? You know, I've got three kids, so I myself, you know, I'm kind of, I guess you could say I'm kind of nurturing some little film buffs myself, but uh, it seems like there is less and less of them. I see we do have some people here. Kobe Reviews Movies, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much for being here. Nerdy Blurb TV, thank you for being here. I greatly appreciate it. And in case you guys didn't see that awesome intro that I have here that I use in nearly all my videos, that was actually done by Ryan over at Nerdy Blurb TV, an awesome dude. And as a matter of fact, they recently had a sale on uh you know on t i don't think it was teespring on one of those on one of those websites and i went ahead and went out there and got me some nerdy blurb tv merch got a couple of shirts getting ready to come in the mail and can't wait to, can't wait to get those in so i can support uh sh i guess you would say sport them and support nerdy blurb tv one of my favorite channels awesome content creator absolutely love ryan over at nerdy blurb tv excellent dude so yeah um these family films you know it seems like there's just less and less of them coming out these days that you know that are really great films and you know but i still have to question that it just seems like you know we're looking to so many films these days especially with the current landscape of you know hollywood and you know the way people feel about movies and everything you know talking about agendas and all that kind of stuff you know like yeah, it just seems like we do see a lot of that in films these days, and you know, there's there's always been that in films, by the way. Um, there's always been these kind of uh, narratives and films like that. Um, just just put put into films, and there's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, is you know, they've got it's got to be done right. You know, like I think you know there is a point where it becomes the, it starts to be uh, too too on the nose and things like that. And there are films out there that I think definitely uh, kind of break these boundaries down, and you know, just don't conform to. Uh, I don't know, I guess you would say all the Hollywood norms. And the, the reason I kind of brought this up is um, yesterday I actually just took my children out to see uh, Dora the Explorer, Dora and the Lost City of Gold, I believe that's the name of it. And if you guys, I, I've got to do a review of that movie, and I'll probably get that shot today. But if you guys haven't been out to see Dora the Explorer, um, Dora the Lost City of Gold, and you have a family and everything... You guys got to go see this movie. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, like, um, this is not this is a movie I probably wouldn't normally go see if I was, um, you know, if I didn't have kids or anything like that. Or would I? I? I honestly don't know. Like, this movie was, it was actually really cute. It was really good. Um, I've heard, I've seen several different reviews on this movie, and I think they all kind of said about the same thing, that this movie is surprisingly good. And, um... And I don't know. Should, should it be surprising? Should it be so surprising to us that this movie is good? Um, it was a great, a great family film. Um, the, there isn't really any actors that I knew in it, aside from Michael Pena and Ava Longoria. Um, the other guy who was, uh, I, I can't remember his name. He was in that, he was in that new, uh, he was in that movie Overboard. Um, no, not Kurt Russell. Not Kurt Russell. The new one. The new one with Anna Faris and. The, the Hispanic actor guy, you know, I can't remember his name, but he was he was in it as well. Other than that, a whole bunch of people in this movie I didn't know, and I've got to tell you, it was it was a good movie. There was um, you know, like I remember going into it, there was a lot of people talking about, you know, like oh, what's what's with this movie? What's with Dora? You know, she being older, and you know, what she, you know, you can um, you know, I don't know, just people talking about the movie, you know, like. Um, she's kind of older. She's a teenager. She's, you know, I, I think I remember people noting like, oh, she's wearing a bra and all this kind of stuff. And you can see like, 
she's a teenager in this movie. Um, she's a teenager in high school, and that's part of the fun landscape of this film. Um, this movie actually takes, uh, you know, some of the, how would you say, some of the some of the social issues um, that we see, you know, like uh, things going on in movies these days, and it kind of pokes fun at them. It kind of fo- pokes fun at them, you know, because we see in a lot of movies these days, you know, this, you know, a, a lot of people talking about these um, feminist agendas in films, or you know, representation in films, and all these things, and all these things that people are talking about movies these days they're tired of seeing the films you know we're just tired of seeing it and you know it's it's you know something i've kind of argued a, um, for a while that you know these things have always really been in films and tomorrow i'm going to have once again a special guest here on the show uh stevie j's reviews i guess we had such a good time last time stevie j's reviews um has said that he's going to come back on the show tomorrow so make sure you guys tune into that and maybe this is something that we'll go ahead and discuss i'm gonna you know shoot these ideas to him about uh just i guess like um like the you know, a lot of the um, agenda-based things that are going on in films, and that's like the representation in films and different things like that, you know, something I kind of talked about last week as well. But this movie was actually really good. There's, um, in Dora, they actually made, po- kind of poked fun of, of some of these um, social issues, I guess, like um, things with like some of the feminism in there and, you know, like just representation and things like that. And this is a film like... Um, I, there's definitely a lot of that in there, you know, we've got a, a lot of um, Hispanic actors, as well as, you know, I think there's there's a couple of white people in it, you know, there's not a whole lot of white people, so, you know, it's all good, but it's all done, it's all done in the right way, you know, there's, they don't try to make a big deal of it, there's a couple of jokes throughout the movie, um, kind of poking at, you know, kind of poking at the feminism bear, um, and it was really, it was really well done, and it kind of had me chuckling throughout the whole film, there's actually a couple of spots in the film that, kind of got me a little bit emotional too i'm sitting there like wow really all right like this this film this film actually knows what it is and it plays well it plays really well for the for the audience that it's going for which is families and you know uh definitely younger kids like my my kids seen it they love the film like we like uh, my son was sitting there uh laughing throughout the film uh, my daughters love the film we came out of the film and they were excited i was excited i felt good it was a good it was a feel good family movie um definitely one i think you guys should go see um and yeah, I mean, it's an underestimated film, which brings me up to some some other films. Like I said, it seems like we're getting less and less of these great family films, or or, or are we? Are we just not paying attention to them? Uh, you know, when we get some of these kind of good films out there, I think it's something um, that, especially if you have a family, you should go out there and support these films. So hopefully we will get more of them. I know there's another one getting ready to come out um, here pretty soon called, what is it, Playing With Fire? That has, uh, that's... You know which one I'm talking about. It's got John Cena in there. It's obviously got Keegan Michael Key, an absolutely hilarious um, uh, comedic actor. I won't say he's a comedian; he's a comedic actor. It looks it looks funny. He's got Brianna Hildebrand from uh, she played um, you know who she plays she, yeah in the Deadpool movies. Um, absolutely beautiful young lady and you can see that like um they obviously get like separated from their family and they're there with some some firemen and a whole bunch of funny things going on there it's got tyler main in it and john leguizamo tyler main you know what's kind of funny is tyler main in this movie actually kind of looks like i can't remember the actor's name um bull bull shannon um you know who i'm talking about from from night court he actually looks like that dude in the movie but um another you know i've seen previews to this film and it looks like one of those kind of cheesy family films out there like well you know i'm not gonna go see it unless i have a family which totally makes sense why would you go see a family film I mean, unless you're just a movie reviewer or anything like that you know if, if i was me and i didn't have kids i might not go see this movie except for back when i didn't have kids and you know through the through the 2000s when i was you know when i was uh, in my 20s and everything i used to go to the movie and pretty much watch all the films um, that they were playing at the movie theater, unless it was just something I really didn't want to go see. And I've got to tell you, um, there's more of them coming out. You know, we, we've obviously, aside from playing with fire, we've obvious, obviously got uh, John uh, uh, Jumanji, um, the next level getting ready to come out, which absolutely looks hilarious. Uh, once again, we see the, seen another trailer for this film. My kids are absolutely, I mean, they're jumping out of their skin to go see this new Jumanji movie. You know, the last Jumanji movie we got back in 2017, an absolutely great film. And that was a good thing about that Dora film. This um, Dora, the Explorer, you know, the city of Lost Gold. I got to tell you, that's the most fun I've had in, a, in one of these family movies. Just like really kind of the most fun I've had in a movie since Jumanji, 
you know, and I haven't gone to see some of these other films I'm getting ready to talk about at the theater, and some of them didn't even release at the theater. Um, it's the most fun I've had in one of these movies um, since since Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Um, it was really that that good. It was really that fun, lighthearted family fun. And this and the door film knows exactly what it is and exactly what it isn't. That's what was so good about it. But Jumanji, the next level, actually looks like it's probably going to be our next really great family film out there. Something you can um, you know take to take your family to and rest assured that it's going to be good and entertaining you're going to get some good laughs along with this playing with fire i mean i don't know i might take my kids to see it i might not um john cena is kind of one of those hit or miss um i guess you could say actors he's moving more into the acting thing now you know and he's trying to grow his chops so it's definitely something you know um he's kind of grown from where he has been and where and where he's going um, it's been pretty good. Uh, Kermit the Log, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the live stream. He says, um, "Is a Nightmare on Elm Street a family film?" Well, it deals with families. It deals with families. So I guess it, it kind of depends on what you want to call a family film. <laughs> um, Kobe reviews movie says Eugenio Derbez was the guy in Overboard. Okay, is that his name? Yeah, and you know, I, and I'm probably butchered his name there. Uh, Nerdy Blurb TV says Overboard and Arthur are two remakes that shouldn't have happened. Um, you know, I haven't seen Overboard, but I've heard from several people it was decent, and I've got to tell you, um, it would be hard, hard to outdo the first one. I mean. Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn, all the kids in there. Like that that movie that, that movie's one of my favorite movies growing growing up. I absolutely loved um Overboard when I was growing up. And Arthur. I don't know if I've seen Arthur. Um probably either one of them. But uh yeah, I know what you're saying about like, like uh, remakes and stuff. I mean, they're, they're not they're not an easy thing to do, but sometimes there comes a point when you're doing um some of these remakes where they may have had a different idea for a different movie. And you got to, you know, they probably looked at stuff and they're like, you know, we might as well just call this this movie because that's pretty much what it is. And people are going to call us out on it if we don't. Case in point, the Point Break movie that came out. Now, another movie, a great family film that I want to talk about. It seems like, um, it seemed, you know, I took my kids to see it, I think probably on Dollar Tuesday or something that came out uh, last year, I believe, was Peter Rabbit. Did you guys see Peter Rabbit? I remember um, some of the Peter Rabbit books when I was growing up, some of the cartoons and everything, and they even made reference uh, to the Peter Rabbit when I was, uh, you know, in 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 the movie. Yeah. Um and I thought this movie, Peter Rabbit, was an absolutely great film. Um, now, a great family film. Is it one great, like, you know, like if you're an adult and you just want to go see it and you're, you know, more into action? It really depends on what you're into. But um, for me, like I said, I like these family films. I've got kids of my own. Um, I grew up, I grew up, you know, obviously I was a kid one time too. And I, I still like watching these types of films. And I got to tell you, Peter Rabbit is, is another one that was out there. I think it was highly overlooked by a lot of people. And it was another one of these just like cute family family films that really knew what it was it knew its audience and what it was going for and they made they made um they really took no issues in trying to and just trying to have fun with it in that sort of a way um well, you know, Donald Gleason was in it. Absolutely, uh, you know, he's he's a pretty good actor. Uh, he was it was really perfect casting because you know he's kind of great at doing those kind of uh, how would you say over the top kind of overreactive uh, roles. He's really good at that. And plus, it had oh man, I can't remember the other actress's name that was in that movie. Uh, the other main actress, she's really great too. Oh man, I feel bad because I like seeing her in movies. You guys know who I'm talking about, though. You guys know who I'm talking about. Should I look it up? Should I look up your name? I don't know. Um, I'm misguided. What's up? How you doing today? Just discussing some family films. Thank you so much for being here. But yeah, um, what, Peter Rabbit is another one of those out there that I took my kids to, and I was sitting there. I was quite delighted in the film. Like, man, like this movie is actually better than than I thought it was going to be, or than, maybe than I wanted it to be. Maybe it was better than I wanted it to be. And sometimes I kind of I kind of feel that's how we get sometimes too. Is maybe we put expectations on films, or maybe we see certain films and we're like, that's going to be garbage. Why would I go see that? And I think this is one of that Peter Rabbit was definitely one of those films that I was quite delighted in seeing how great of a film that it was. Now, another one that I want to bring up here uh, that d didn't actually make it to the movie theater, I don't believe, that I thought was an act actually great film. I actually sat down and watched uh, a lot more of it here recently um, that my, my kids have been watching since it came out um, on Netflix, and that's um, Woody Woodpecker. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have seen uh, Woody, Woody Woodpecker um, out there on you know Netflix or anything. And you know if you have a family, you're probably not going to watch it unless you just like watching films to review them or anything like that. But Woody Woodpecker 
it was actually a pretty good movie, a pretty cute film. You know what I mean? And sure, it kind of has, you know, some of those, some of those, uh, I don't know, what would you call those, uh, it's got environmental messages in there, you know, like hippie stuff, you know, because, you know, just talking about the environment, you know, the, you know, the forest and how they're being torn down and all that kind of stuff, and Woody Woodpecker was basically there trying to, you know, trying to protect his home, and I thought it was actually a really great movie, like, I watch it, and, you know, obviously, like, when it comes to these kinds of films, some of these, like, you're going to get some of that over, over the top kind of acting, you know, just some of that over, over emphasized things, I guess you could say, um, but yeah, it was, it was like Woody Woodpecker was actually really good. It was a good, cute family film. Um, you know, some of the overreactions and and you know, oh, the acting in these movies isn't always the best. And you know, I don't think that it necessarily needs to be. Sometimes I think going the cheesy route actually works in some of these films. And I thought for the Woody Woodpecker film, it was really it was done really well. Um, they didn't, it, it, you know, it's one of those kinds of things where. You know, if, if a film knows what it is and what it's what what it's doing and who it's who it's trying to you know who it's aimed at, I think that really goes a lot says a lot for a film. And again, Woody Woodpecker was another one out there that I thought was uh, I thought was really well done um, for what it is and for the audience that it was going for. Um, it had a lot of cheesy slapsticky kind of humor in it aimed at families, um, obviously it was a great film, I mean, my, my kids put that film, uh, put that movie on Netflix quite often to watch, and I'm like, why are you guys watching this junky film, <laughs> this stupid movie, Woody, Woody this, this, ain't, this ain't the Woody Woodpecker I grew up with, but it is, it, it kind of is, you know, and, and like I said, I really actually liked the film, I thought it was pretty dang good, um, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, what are our expectations and also where are we at? You know, like, like I said, if you're, you're an adult out there, you don't have kids or families, you know, a lot of people aren't going to watch some of these films, uh, to, to rate and, you know, give a chance or even want to go support them rather out, out at the movie theater when they come out on, uh, on home video. And, um, again, like I said, if you, if you don't have a family, you probably won't, but if you do, if you do, I think you definitely need to get out and see some of these films, um, now, gosh, what was another one? You know, and there's, there's there's tons of them out there that release every year that are um, family films. But these are just some of the ones that I want to kind of want to kind of look at. They're kind of I'd say maybe kind of bigger ones and maybe kind of overlooked ones as well. Um, but uh, you know, like the, like I said, this door movie was really good. And I, I like I said, I haven't had that much fun at the theater and laughing and you know in a movie or just any of the kind of things in there like the messages in there that you can extract from it um, that are that are good for families and kids. Um, since Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, which was an absolutely great one. Uh, I, you know, you know um, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle came out in 2017. We're getting this new one in 2019. And of course, you know, a lot of it comes to uh, casting and writing and things like that when it comes to these kinds of films too. And, you know, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle is one of those ones that they got you know, the, you, you, you get the right people into these kind of films and it works out. And, and it'll work out every single time as long as you have the right script, the right cast. And, you know, that it doesn't always it doesn't always seem to be the case, you know. Like I was I did a commentary on Saturday, which, you know, I'm not sure if you guys caught my live stream on Saturday. I was um, doing a commentary over uh, Dark Phoenix. It got blocked. It got blocked worldwide. I didn't get a content. It was just a content claim. It wasn't, you know, a con it wasn't... Uh, a strike or anything but they took it down I went ahead and contested it because they're saying you know through this part of the film or through this part of my video was this you know their their content and you know I went ahead and challenged it I told them you know I'm providing a commentary over the whole movie I was talking literally the whole time like you could hear the stuff in the background um but I was talking over the whole film um but that was one of those ones where, you know, they got all the talent, they got the characters, they got the story, they, they had all the right makings for a good film. It just wasn't a good film, you know. And fortunately, fortunately for all of us, um, you know, and especially for all the other people involved, is Simon Kinberg on that movie actually came out and took um, responsibility for all the things that happened in that movie. Because ultimately... ultimately, it was his fault. Because the movie, um, I went ahead and bought it on digital. Um, the movie is a mess. The movie is an absolute mess, and and I hate saying that because you know, like I've loved all the X Men films uh, coming out, you know, and you know they're they're not the greatest. I've talked about this before. You know, a lot of people, you know, we're really spoiled as fans these days with you know where things have gone with some of the things we've gotten from Warner Brothers with their DC movies, and even 
especially um, Disney and Marvel Studios and what they've done with these MCU films. Uh, we've really been spoiled. I think a lot of people forget where we've come from um, in the movie world, considering, you know, where we started out at. I mean, we've had these comic book movies coming out pretty much our whole lives, okay? I mean, let's not get confused. We had Batman movies back before I was even born. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I watched them. You know, we had Superman um, through the 70s and 80s, you know, um, with Christopher Reeves. We had, you know, Batman 89, you know, with, with uh, Michael Keaton. You know, we had Punisher. I think Punisher was the same year, wasn't it? Wasn't it in 89 um, when Dolph Lundgren came out? You know, we had, uh, we had the Blade films that started... I want to say those were late 90s as well. We even had a Spider-Man movie back in the... God, was that... In the, that might have been in the 70s as well. But we had, we've had we had these comic book films all around all along. And, you know, X-Men was the one that really kind of launched off... Uh, was really kind of the launching pad for um, a lot more of these comic book movies becoming successful. And I think we've all... You know, and some of the people out there who criticize, who are the, the most critical of these films weren't even alive when these movies were coming out um, or weren't even of the age to know what we've basically gone through. Now, they've seen the films. Yeah, sure. They've seen the films, but they're, they don't know what it's like to grow up in a world without having these great films. You know, a lot of them started coming of age and really becoming self-aware and just aware of things in general since the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been around, I mean, we got to think 11, 12 years. Um, anybody, somebody who's 18 and under, they lived in that whole world where all this stuff was coming up and where it started really becoming great. And they probably weren't aware of how great it was until the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, they, you know, so like somebody, me, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I grew up in the world where these movies weren't being made very often. They weren't the best. And I look back on them, I'm like, these, some of these movies really hold up. They really are good, you know, um, even compared to these, uh, these Marvel Cinematic Universe films. So I think we're, we are spoiled in that way. And, you know, and just, I guess social media kind of uh, affects a lot of these things too because everybody's so vocal about everything. We got more and more people out there doing movie reviews and everything, which is very good because, you know, it can be bad. You know, like one thing I never really look at is critic scores or anything like that. Rotten Tomatoes is a site I've never been to once. I have not, you know, and people probably think I'm kidding. I have not clicked on Rotten Tomatoes and went to their site one time ever, ever. Because to me, it's it's really, uh, for somebody like me, it's irrelevant. Like, I'm going to go see a movie regardless, whether I like it, um, if I want to go see it. You know what I mean? I just I just like movies. Um, somebody's review of it isn't going to affect me wanting to go see it. Um, a, a Rotten Tomato score or a Fresh Tomato score or any of those kind of scores, audience scores and stuff, that stuff means nada to me. Nothing. It doesn't. Um, I just don't... Uh, I just don't look at it. If I see a movie, I want to go see it. Um, and that, and that's really, I mean, about all I can say about that. But, uh, yeah, you know, a movie knowing what it is and what they're going for really, really means a lot. And that's one, one of the things, like I said, I really liked about this door film. You guys should get out and see it. And hopefully we see more of um, in these films. And like I said, Jumanji was one of those ones that came out and it had all the right people. And one of the things that's so great about it is what they did with it. Because it's got those great family messages in there. There's great things for, for kids to learn to learn from, you know. Um, learning about humility. Learning about friends and how... Um, how you know how the kind of the landscape is when you're growing up as a child um going through school you know they're they're, they're kind of you know we've seen like jumanji where um the two characters uh were were really good friends growing up and then they kind of split apart once they get in you know, the middle school and through high school and things like that and that's just something that we've all that we all go through i'm sure we all we've all had plenty of friends uh g growing up uh growing through high school and things like that and dealt with those exact same issues and i think it's great when they put those kind of things in these films um it was really good uh what they did in jumanji but not only that some of the other things is uh, once they actually got in the video game some of the great things that happened in there, you know, just some of the great acting, you know, like, um, Kevin, you know, like the, the, my standout, the standout performance of, of the whole movie has got to be Jack Black. Okay. Jack Black, the whole film, he's basically acting like a teenage girl. You know what I mean? And he did a freaking fantastic job bringing that to, uh, to the film. Like, like it was like, it was Oscar level acting. I don't know. You you have to answer that. <laughs> if you ask me, I say it was because the whole film, the whole film, 
he had to be in that I'm a teenage 16 year old girl, you know, 17 year old girl um, in, in high school. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the popular beauty queen and all these kinds of stuff. And he had to act that the whole film and he absolutely knocked it out of the park. There wasn't one film one, one second in that film where I feel like he broke that character at all. And that really takes some talent. Um, it, it really does. I mean, it, it sounds it sounds easy. You know, it sounds easy. But he, he really did great. Um, obviously, The Rock uh, has been, you know, he's one of those actors who's like a John Cena. He's been going out there kind of really developing his acting chops. And The Rock has come a long way in his acting abilities um, from when from when he started out. I mean, you got to think, like, one of the first things I remember seeing him in was that Mummy movie. Remember, he was in the Mummy where, you know, pretty much he just had that, you know, he, he started out just being a wrestler, you know, doing a role, and, you know, you kinda, he's kind of dry and, you know, kind of, you know, just didn't really have the acting chops there. And now you can see that he, you know, he's really come a long way. And in that movie was definitely a good one where, you know, he's um, – and then the next one looks like he's doing really great too, you know. And a lot of it comes down to those expressions, you know, trying to. And that, and that's the th- that, that's the craft of acting is getting all those micro expressions, facial facial reactions, body reactions, letting your body do the talking and different things like that. Uh, the Rock obviously did you. Kevin Hart, you know, did did great in the movie. Um, you know, just kind of he's just kind of one of those over the top characters as well. You know what I mean? And you know, I guess he. It was a perfect role for him because, you know, he's not the greatest actor in the world. And I can guarantee you an actor like Kevin Hart, um, comedian like Kevin Hart, will probably go out there and tell you he knows he's not the greatest actor in the world. But he did really good um, bringing, you know, in the role because he was playing that jock who was, you know, the big guy who got shrunk down to the small guy. And Kevin, Kevin Hart's, and you know, I, I think we all know um, somebody who's out there who out there who's like that, you know, the small guy. We all know the small guy. The small guy's always ready to scrap, dude. We've all got that guy who is, you know, short in stature, who is a small dude that he's always ready to scrap. He's always talking trash, and he's just always ready to fight. And chances are, most a lot of them were always ready to, and were ready to back it up. And he did. He brought that role that role really well. And you know, there's one thing that a lot of people have been talking about when it comes to casting choices and everything out there these days is, you know, Jumanji is one of those films. They didn't replace the ginger. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't replace. They didn't replace the beautiful, milky-skinned, red-haired girl in the movie. They didn't. They let Karen um, Karen Gillan come in and um, play uh, the young lady who, in the movie, was a light-skinned ginger, and she got to be a light-skinned ginger in the game. And man, that's just something else I've got to say. Who doesn't like Karen Gillan, right? She's absolutely adorable. Have you ever followed her on in, on Instagram? You got to go check out her Instagram and follow her. She's adorable. She, I mean, like, and I don't say that in any mean that in any kind of offensive way, but she's like a really just like down to earth girl, and she makes me laugh. You know what I mean? Plus, she's stunning. She's absolutely beautiful. Gingers rule the world. Um, but yeah, you know the, the Jumanji movie was great, and like I said, this this. This Dora movie kind of had me there too. It had me feeling the same way, and that's why I'm here. I'm um, talking about these things today, is because I think a lot of these films get overlooked as uh, being being uh, being not very good, or maybe being trashy things that people don't want to go see or support out there. And I think it's something. Like I said, if you have a family, definitely get out and support these movies, so we can show, you know, so we can hopefully show Hollywood that we want to see more of these types of films. It was a fun film. I'm gonna go ahead and get back into the chat here. See, we got uh, a lot more people came in. Um, I am misguided. It's the secret of Nim was good. Um, move, move to the, move to the Lee of the Stone. Left of the. I'm guessing you meant left of. I don't know. Lee of the Stone. Um. But uh, secret of Nim. I've never actually seen that one. I didn't know they made a movie of that. I remember that that book when I was uh, when I was growing up. Um, Nerdy Blur says yes. Expectations are honestly the killer of the killer of fans' love for their entertainment. It is, you know, expectations really are. I mean, we get these, we get these high expectations for a movie, and then when they aren't met, we're really disappointed. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we should have some sort of expectations um, when it, when it comes to when it comes to films. But yeah, I mean, I think sometimes when you know, maybe we have preconceived expectations for a film, and that kind of ruins it for a lot of us sometimes. Um, Kermit says never saw the movie. Um, Nerdy Bill says uh, Nim is fantastic. I'm gonna have to check that out. The Secret of Nim is that like on. Is that on Netflix or anything? I'll have to check that out with my kids. 
I am misguided said I love the cartoon as a kid. I'm guessing we're talking um about the Woody Woodpecker here. Uh that was the Woody Woodpecker movie. It was actually really good. I was quite surprised at how good of a film it was. And it was one of those kind of things like I think they kind of got the right cast of people there too for that film like the guy playing the father. I mean, he kind of seemed like a he did a really good job playing that kind of executive CEO dick. You know what I mean? Like that kind of guy, you know, and then the kids dealing with him as his father, calling him by his name instead of calling him dad and stuff. And he's like, oh, just the, the, just the way he kind of, like he was, they got the right actor because he was good at playing the jerk. And then also playing that kind of over the, like some of that over the top stuff with expressions and just, just that, that kind of cheesy role. Like he, he played it really well. And I thought it was a good movie. But yeah, uh, Woody Woodpecker, I mean, it's a movie. It's on Netflix. If you got Netflix, you should definitely check it out. Um, even just, just to watch it and say you've watched it and see what I'm talking about. Like, it's actually it's actually a pretty decent little film. A Nerdy Blurb says, Hobbs and Shaw was another. Too many people pulled the film apart, but it was made for those, but it wasn't made for those people. You know, and Hobbs and Shaw is one I still haven't gone to the theater and seen, and I need to. Maybe I'll see if I can see that on um, uh discount tuesday because i've been wanting to see that film because i haven't watched a fast and furious movie since probably part five was it five or six it was one of those films it was the one where they were dropping the the freight and everything off the off the big just airplane and i started falling asleep during the movie just because i wasn't entertained by it i didn't think it was that great but hobbs and shaw it started going so ridiculous in its marketing campaign and everything i'm like this looks so cheesy i have to go see this I have to go see this cheese whiz at the th- at the films, and yeah, and that and that's that's one of the things. Like, um, yeah, I mean, you could tear it down and pull it apart, but I mean, the movie obviously knows what it is. It knows who its audience is and what it's going for, and you can't fault something for that. Um, Nerdy Blurb says, "I love the bedtime stories." I haven't seen bedtime stories. I'm gonna have to check that out too. I'm sure my kids will enjoy it. I'm misguided. Says, "It is, it is when they change." Who the movie was made for in the same universe. I'm not sure what, what we're talking about there, but um, I know what you're talking about. Like, as far as like them making changes in who it's made for. And, and that's one of the things, you know, like, uh, like I said, like with this Dora film, like they knew who it was aimed for. They know, they knew what they were going for. The film knows what it is and what it isn't. And it's great when a film knows that. And that's kind of how I feel about that Woody Woodpecker film. Even the, even the, um, even that, what was the other one I was just talking about? I was about to say Roger Rabbit, but uh, Peter Rabbit film. It knew what it was. And I think that's something important for the filmmakers and things like that to know what a movie is and who the audience is going for when they're making obviously when they're making the movie and then you know going into uh, films and things like that you know like the, the, the trailers and stuff you can't advertise a movie as something that it's not and expect people to go into it and enjoy it i think that was probably one of the downfalls with the x-men film um there just did some of the i mean aside from the fact that i mean they it was really a not good but then the marketing campaign i mean they it seems like they kind of didn't know what to do, so they were just doing all kinds of different things. But yeah, I mean, certainly knowing um, what a movie is as a filmmaker, as a producer, as a writer, and stuff like that definitely helps make a movie uh, good. New York Blurb TV says, spoiled fans, uh, no more like entitled. It's annoying. Yeah, I would, well, I think it's a little bit of both. I think you're right. I would say it's spoiled and entitled at the same time. And we're just seeing more and more of that um, out there in the world. And it's, it's good for studios to listen to their audience. They certainly need to. But at some point, they have to draw the line as well. And saying like, okay, we like, like with that Sonic thing, you know, the Sonic the Hedgehog film, you know, that like, um, you know, a lot of times I'll always say like studios, just make your movie, do what you need to. You don't need to cater to anybody specific as long as you know who, what your movie is, who you're going for and what it's going to be. Um, now the Sonic thing, you know, I would say is one of those exceptions where the studio listened to um, the fans and said, okay, maybe we need to go back and rethink the character design a little bit because believe me, um, no matter what they do with that Sonic movie, changing the character design isn't going to put more asses in seats. Okay, it's not. It's it's not going to. All those people who were upset and all this stuff, half those people probably aren't going to go see the damn movie in the first place. But they did listen and it was something that they kind of obviously felt themselves like, okay, we do need to go through and change this a little bit and make it better. So that was one of those times, but you know, when when we get where they're doing all these different changes and things that probably um unnecessary changes 
you know, I, I, th I think there's got to be a place to where they draw the line. Um, I am misguided says, I still want a greatest American hero movie. Bring back William Cat. You know what? That would be great. I was actually just thinking about that the other day. The greatest American hero. Um, that would be that would be something cool. Um, definitely a, a cool concept to do. Now, the only thing that I want that I wonder is, does that really work as a movie? You know, would that really work as a movie? Um, I'm not so sure because I think I, I think if anything it would be great doing it in what it's done and plus we see that like a lot of these films that, that, that get translated from TV shows into movies they don't ever do so good and I think a lot of that is some of those preconceived notions that people have of like oh this was a TV show I enjoyed and you know and then you know you kind of you kind of carry that um, expectation into the to the movie theater when it comes out and I think that that in itself can be a bad thing um, perfect example I can think of that for that um, was the movie Chips. Uh, I thought Chips was absolutely, I thought it was, okay, I won't say it was an absolutely great film, but I thought it was a good movie. Um, I thought it was it was funny, it was enjoyable, the comedy, there was humor. Um, was it a little bit over the top for what the Chips show was? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, it was a little over the top, it was a little bit different, it was a little more modernized. Um, but overall... I thought the Chips film was actually pretty good. Plus, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Dax Shepard anyway. He he directed the film, and he's in the film, obviously. I thought it was a pretty good movie. But, again, I know there's a lot of people out there who just looked at it and were like, I'm not watching this. This isn't the Chips that I grew up with. So I, I think there is that. And I think with the, A Greatest American Hero would be a, um, a good to be remade. But however, when it comes to like a movie or a TV show, I'm kind of divided on. But that is definitely a good one. What was that other one growing, that I remember growing up back in the day? Was it Condor Man or something like that? I can't remember. I, that would be something uh, uh, definitely uh, different. But yeah, definitely Greatest American Hero would be a good one. Plus, um, is William Cat the guy who played? Uh, was that the, like the character in the show or the guy who played him? Because you know the dude with his curly hair. Hey, we need that. We need that curly hair back, man. You know what I mean? We need. <laughs> we definitely. We definitely need that curly hair back on. Um, coming back. Coming back for that show. I thought that that, that was one of the great things about it. Was uh, he went back, went out there with his perm and man, he rocked that shit. Um, aggressively relaxing says you can call me entitled, but the corporation of aggressively relaxing demands that Marvel Entertainment be a shared universe. Happiness makes more profit, so my shareholders demand I fight for this. Fair enough, aggressively, and I'll take your word for it. And you know what? You've got my you've got my vote. You've got my vote. I in in aggressively relaxing, we trust. I don't know about more so maybe than Kevin Feige. You know, that Kevin Feige, man. He's sure awesome. Anyway, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marvel Entertainment be a shared universe. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, hopefully that Marvel, whole, that whole Marvel thing that comes along. You know, like, I've seen there's this recent rumor everybody's talking about. Sony went back and said, oh, well, we'll give you 30% of the cut if as long as you bring Venom into it, too. You know, like. Come on, man. Like, is this rumor even real? But also, it seems like a silly demand. But at the same time, that would be something, you know, that, if anything, that, that's an offer that Kevin Feige and them would want, is to bring Venom into their universe. Now, the only problem with it is, is, you know, they've already released the movie, and we know how Kevin Feige is. He'll get a hold of that and be like, uh, I, I, I don't want to use that actor. I don't want to act like that movie was any kind of canon to the MCU films, and that's gonna that would be the one downfall and the one um, bargaining chip that Sony would have that Disney would probably be like, no, no, um, we don't want to do that because Kevin Feige definitely keeps a a, a tight uh, a tight run on his ship when it comes to things like that. He's he's not gonna want to bring somebody else's stuff into his universe. Um, I am misguided. Says the best thing about the Jumanji sequel is how they um, MMO'd the game where they they had sick where they had set classes and had to work together to win. Indeed. Yeah. I did I did like that where they had they had everybody in there. They all they all had their Yeah, like you said they all had their weaknesses and everything and everybody had to work together to win. And that was something, you know, even like the the new the new movie uh, that's getting ready to come out, the next level. It's going to be interesting what they do with that cuz obviously we see like the two grandfathers are coming in and 
they're going to be playing they're going to be playing a part you know they're not going to really be experienced and they're obviously the two who have to work together the most being the rock uh who's his character was the main character who's going to basically help you win the game you're going to need him and then obviously he's going to need a sidekick who uh who was you know had hold held their stash of weapons and then uh, obviously we've got uh, the kid who got sucked in earlier who was the rock in the first film who's experienced in the game but they're in a new level and he's going to be playing the jonas character obviously and, that, and that's who i'm guessing he's going to be playing the jonas character in the movie the, the the Jonas brother, you know, he's going to be playing that character in the, in the movie. So, you know, it's going to be interesting where he ends up in the movie because he's going to have the experience of knowing like, okay, I need to do these things to save Jumanji. But, you know, it's a new level. So he won't know exactly what to do. How many lives has he lost? How close is he? You know, is he going to be in the same spot where he only has one life left? And, you know, he's just basically just kind of getting by just survival, doing, trying to play it as safe as he can. Um, definitely it's something that's going to be interesting about the, uh, the sequel and where they're going where they're going with that <laughs> and um i am this guy says the scorpion king yeah oh yeah yeah the scorpion king i you know and i don't i haven't seen that in a while but i remember when those movies were coming out man the mummy movies those movies were great remember like the first and second one those movies were so good you know brendan Fraser, where are you man we need you we need you i always like brendan Fraser as an actor um I've always thought he was a, a pretty good actor. And is he the greatest actor? No, no, he's not the greatest. But for everything that he ever done, like most of the films he was ever in were always played to, were he, like, he played to his strengths. He's a good dramatic actor, too. You know, he's a good dramatic actor, good at action. I think the reason he's good at action is because, I mean, he's got a big frame. He's a big dude. You put the, you put some muscle on that dude. I mean, he could, you know, he he would have he'd probably been a good Captain America. I think he has the chops for it. Um you know, imagine if we would have got Brandon Fraser's Captain America, you know, instead of Chris Evans. Of course, he's a little bit older, so, you know, I get it. Um, the Rock was great in Star Trek Voyager. I've never seen Star Trek Voyager. I've never seen that. I'll take your word for it, though. I am misguided. says, I no longer fight in bars. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Kermit says, hail gingers. Yeah, man, gingers are the best. Um... Ryan Kennel, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much for being here. Um, he says that looked like that looked like a Kermit sip of tea. Yes. Um, I am this guy says goddess of the earth. Um, I am this guy says no. I meant uh, Lee of the Stone. Oh, okay, Lee of the Stone. I'm not sure what that comes from. I miss guy that says William Cat was the guy who played him. Uh, he used to be um, on the con circuit. Oh, okay. He, like he used to go around like like to the comic cons and stuff. I believe that because that 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 show was huge and um it was yeah he was he was you know I remember him being in some other things uh, when I was growing up. I remember the, the the character and he looked he looks very familiar when I see him. Uh, just you know a lot of that's kind of cloudy from you know the guy I was when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I always remembered I always remembered loving that show. You know, um, the greatest American hero. And you know the other thing, uh, I miss guys. Is Brandon Fraser is in is in Doom Patrol right now? Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. How's he looking, man? I know I you know you, you see all these tabloid kind of things out there. You know, I remember one of them showed Brandon Fraser. Man, he was looking pretty tore up. Man, looked like he uh, it looked like he was probably in that. What was that TV that movie that he did where he was living underground with his parents? um blast from the past man i seen uh, one of those pictures i seen of brandon fraser at, at one point man he didn't look so good it looked like he did spend a lot of years in the underground bunker man he looked all he looked all like very pale and very like like he had that thing going on and he didn't look so good he didn't look so good. he looked like he like me too like he was going bald but i don't know um uh, but brandon fraser yeah he's i mean he was a pretty good actor you know um and he's been in a lot of movies, you know, from from drama to action to comedy. Uh, he he was a good actor, you know, Encino Man. I, I'm sure we all remember him in Encino Man, you know. Great film, great film. And Encino Man was one of those, and I say great film because it's, it's not the greatest film. It's just one of those fun 90s movies that we got back in the day. You know, plus, plus it had infectious grooves in there. And who can say no to Psycho Michael? Yeah, suicidal. Anyway, um... 
yeah uh he he says he is a little portly now <laughs> yeah um and th that's you know and that's unfortunate you know, hopefully hopefully he rises again um out there in the acting world i think he was one of those actors who was really good uh just like uh rick moranis you know, I, know, I think we all know, like, we all kind of know what happened to Rick Moranis was, you know, he had uh, problems with his family, his wife, uh, his wife was really ill, and I think she passed away, and, and, you know, he took time off to be with his family and all of those kinds of things, kind of left the industry. He was another one of those great actors out there. It would be great to see him uh, make a comeback in films, and I thought I thought there was a recent rumor where they were talking about he might be coming back um, in to do something. Uh, I thought, uh, I, but I always thought he was really good. Um, aggressively relaxing says Brandon is a little heavy now, but he'll never be as cut as he was in Tarzan. Yeah, Tarzan. Yeah, he was like he was pretty ripped up in Tarzan. That's why I say like he like you know seeing him in that movie like and you know and then seeing him in the um the Mummy movies you know it's kind of like man he could have he could have been a really good uh, Captain America. I you know I think he's got all the talent there. I mean. I think he's got just as much talent as Chris Evans does. Uh, just Chris Evans has done. He's he's directed a movie. I don't think I don't know if Brent, Brendan Fraser has. That might not be one of his aspirations. I am misguided. Says the Lee of the Stone is where where the Nim rats had to move uh, Mrs. Mouse house to save it from the farmer's power. Oh, okay, okay. I'll. I'll have to check that out. Like I said, I haven't seen, I, you know, I haven't, I remember reading that book when I was a kid and, you know, I don't remember it, man. I've done smoke those years away, but, uh, I, I definitely want to see it. And, you know, just seeing the Lee of the Stone just reminds me, it reminds me of romancing the stone. You know what I mean? You guys remember that movie? Absolutely great movie, man. I need to own those ones on DV romancing the stone. And what was the other one? The sequel to it? Uh, Hmm. <sighs> Why am Jewel of the Nile? Jewel of the Nile. Um, I need to I need to get those movies on DVD or at least digital, man. Those the, those movies were great, which were was some of the great things. Like when uh, Michael Douglas was cast for the Ant Man movies, because those Ant Man movies they remind me of like Romancing the Stone, like that same kind of tone, that same kind of humor, just just a fun kind of family action adventure kind of thing. Um, plus Danny DeVito, right? <laughs> Danny DeVito was in and uh, yeah. Yeah, great, great movies. Um, Kobe Review says, have you seen a Battle at Big Rock? It's a Jurassic World short film made by Jurassic World filmmakers. I haven't. I haven't. Um, if that's on Netflix or something, I'll happily go check that out. Um, uh, I am this guy says, George of the Jungle, not Tarzan. Um, the Tuki Tuki bird is displeased with you. <laughs> yeah, it was George of the Jungle, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Dang it. You got me aggressively relaxing. You're catching me slipping. Yeah, I got my eye on you now. But yeah, you're right. It was it was George of the Jungle. Yeah, and he was pretty ripped up in that movie. Probably the slimmest I've ever seen him. But then, you know, you see you see him in like The Mummy and everything. And, you know, like I said, Brandon Fraser's kind of a big dude anyway. He's got a big frame. So I could easily see him, um, you know, slimming up and, and packing on some muscle, dude. And he's, you know, he'd be, you know, maybe he could be Beast. Maybe he could be beast for you know the the, the for the X Men films coming up. Although once again he is kind of uh, he is kind of a bit older, but uh, he certainly fit more fits the role than Nicholas Holt does. Like man, I was watching I was watching Dark Phoenix again this this weekend, and I'm just like man, Nicholas Holt he's a good actor, but he that was just a complete miscasting. Like and then you see Beast in the movies, like any of the movies that he was in is Beast. Like Beast is a scrawny little. 130 pound dude that like shit even I, i'm not even a superhero i walk through him like a wet paper sack bro like come on man <laughs> put on some muscle dude <laughs> but i don't think he's a guy that that they could pack 15 20 pounds of muscle on him and get him to look the role neither um beast is one of those ones they're gonna have to go cg if the uh, more cg if anything um uh definitely um i am this guy that says it, it is sad i know romancing Romancing the Stone uh, more than ro Romancing the Bone more than Romancing the Stone. I haven't seen Romancing the Bone. Was it, was it good? Who's in that one? Who's in that one? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna roll out porn parody. <laughs> um, Aggressively says, "Ha ha, good look, good looking out. You're 100 percent right. Um, you have been guided well. <laughs> I am misguided. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, um, yeah, because the Tarzan." The Tarzan, they recently did, that was a recent one, and that was uh, that Skarsgård kid that was in that one. Um, I believe that's Stellan Skarsgård's son. 
Stellan Skarsgård, man, he's a Stellan Skarsgård's a great actor, man. He's a great actor. And you know, there was something that I caught. Something I caught, and I'm sure somebody's probably mentioned it out there, and I just haven't really paid attention. But uh, when I went to see last weekend, I went to see uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home with my kids, and you know, there's a Nova um, Easter egg in there, and it's where they show um, they they show you like Peter Parker's on the airplane, and he's scrolling through uh, TV like stuff to watch on the TV on their flight, and it's got this, you know, it shows a little thing of like Tony Stark, but it also showed. Um, it also showed his character in there. Stellan Skarsgård's character of uh, know, why am I forgetting his name in the in the movie? All of a sudden, man. Let me take a sip here. Yeah, I forgot the doctor's name all of a sudden. But uh, he, uh, oh, oh, it's a classic. Christy Canyon. Yes, Christy Canyon. Okay, wow, man, that 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 does have to be a classic. Got Christy Canyon in it. <laughs> not not that I know anything about that. I've got kids, man. A family man. I don't know anything about Christy Canyon. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, uh, they, they showed the, the character there, uh, and it said, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it said something Nova, something this and that, uh, for uh, for that character um, in the movie, like his little documentary that he had in there. It was like something like Nova, something. I'm like, ooh, there's the Easter egg. There's the Easter egg for... Um, for Nova, for the Nova Corps and everything, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's in there, it's in there, but of course, you know, I guess Spider-Man's leaving the MCU, so does it really matter at this point? It still does as part of the MCU. Um, Kobe says, it is on YouTube, um, after the stream, I will drop a link to it. All right, yeah, that'd be awesome, I'd greatly appreciate that, and speaking of, um, I am a little bit, going a little bit past 9 o'clock here, I uh, gotta go out and get things ready for the day, Get go out and get some work done. Um, gonna have a long day today. My kids got got karate class today, and uh, you know my kids, you know, it's gonna be a long day for them. I think I feel so, more sorry for them than I do for than I do for me on Mondays because um, my daughter, you know, my kids are in karate class. They got one of their classes starts at it basically goes from about like five thirty ish to six thirty ish. It's really hard to say. They're not so precise on their times there at class. But then my, my oldest daughter, she used to be in the same class with my son and, and my youngest daughter. They were all in class together through this, for the same hour. But now my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's a purple belt. And now hers is the class after their class. So we're basically sitting there and there on our butts for over two hours. And it's long and exhausting. And uh, it's pretty late. Like my kids, you know, we don't get home till about 8 o'clock. And 8 o'clock is like my kid's bedtime. So they're tired. I'm usually tired and cranky. And it's just not, it's just not, a, it's not a good scene. But I'll have to check that out. Um, I am misguided. Says, uh, what was the superhero TV show in the '80s that had that had Lewis Gossett Jr. in it as a mentor? Huh. I don't know. I don't know. You got me on that one. Um, Lewis Gossett Jr. Man, is he still alive? That's that's a name we certainly don't hear much of anymore i most big one some of the biggest things i remember him from is uh iron eagle you know that was that was his thing back in the day with jason jedrick remember that um but let's see lewis is it lewis gossett okay <laughs> what was the tv show he was in as okay all filmography let's go back here and find that because i'm sure he was um in a tv show through the back in the day where he would have been a mentor in okay so it wasn't in the 70s man's choir boy critical okay 78 um 82 an officer and a gentleman. That's one I need to see. I probably haven't seen it since I was a kid. Um, Jaws 3D, Finders Keepers, The Guardian, Enemy Mine, Iron Eagle, Firewalker, King Cobra, Iron Eagle. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Straight up. What was that? Um, oh, yeah, he was in The Punisher, wasn't he? He was in that Punisher movie. El Diablo, man, I haven't, man, I haven't seen some of these Lewis Gossett Jr. movies in a while, Toy Soldiers, oh, dang, 
Remember that movie, Toy Soldiers? Have you guys ever seen that movie? Man, with Sean Austin and everything back in the day. I'm surprised they haven't remade that movie. I'm surprised they haven't remade that movie. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to. Because that was a good movie. I remember, I think we went to the theater and seen that when I was a kid. Toy Soldiers. Great one where, they, where they, they're on like a, a school campus. It, was, it wasn't It was a college campus. It was a, uh, was it? No, it wasn't a college campus. It was just like a like a high school, like a prep school. And the terrorists go in there and they, they take over the place because they're after the one kid. Because the kid is like maybe the son of the president or something. It's got, God, who's all in that? Will Wheaton? Isn't Will Wheaton in that movie? Yeah, Will Wheaton, Sean Austin, Keith Coogan. Man, remember Keith Coogan? Whatever happened to that, dude? I always loved him seeing Keith Coogan in movies growing up. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Um, um, the other babysitter one. You know what one I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adventures in Babysitting. It was a, it was a good one. Um, yeah, man, that was a good one. Arlie Ermey was in that. Um, Denholm Elliott. Yeah, man. That was a movie, man. Toy Soldiers. Michael Champion. That dude was a good actor, too. It seems like he's in less and less films. Man, just I could go on, I could go on and on about these uh, about films, man. Um he says we will we will we will have to talk to enemy any enemy, enemy mind one day speaking of uh speaking of Lou. Yeah. Um he said too too close to reality now. Yeah, and you know, and that's that's the good thing about you know a lot of these films. You know, like uh, it's okay to be too close to reality. I mean, I think that's something that you know is 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 a good thing when movies do that, um, doing things that are close to reality and just things like that, even based on reality. And that's why last week I was talking about you know like about this, you know people talking about movies being like these movies being escapist media and all these political messages and stuff in movies. It's always been going on. You know what I mean? Like to like you know movies aren't escapist, you know, escapist media, you know, some, some films are, some films are made for that, but a lot of them still have political allegories in them. Um, and just things like that. Some of them, you know, a lot of them aren't so on the nose, but you know, you know, that's what I was talking about last week. And maybe something we'll touch on tomorrow, uh, when I get Stevie J's reviews, uh, back here on the show tomorrow is, you know, like, you know, just that idea of, um, movies being escapist media. Cause if you ask me, it's really not, um, movies are an art form. And that's kind of what I was talking about is movies are an art form and you put into these movies what you want to. And um, a lot of them uh, we can see have have these, you know, these 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 allegories to our real life. And some of them are based in real life. Some of them are made to uh, have messages in them to make us feel a certain way, to get us to realize certain things, to see, you know, to see somebody else's point of view and things like that. So, you know, it's one of the things maybe we'll talk about that with Stevie J reviews tomorrow. But uh, that's all I'm going to ha- I've got for the morning movie chat. Um, again, thank you all so much for tuning in to the morning movie chat. And in case you don't already know, make sure that you're subscribed and click that little bell and all of that good stuff. It helps out the YouTube algorithm and all that kind of stuff. You know, don't make me cry about YouTube and throw some shade at them and tell them, tell you about how bad YouTube is. But you want to make sure you're subscribed and make sure you comment in this video or any videos um, until I hit 500 subscribers and make sure you share it with a friend because as soon as we hit 500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a copy of Alito Battle Angel and John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. To get entered into that, you have to make sure that you are subscribed and comment in this video or any of the videos until we hit 500 subscribers here on the channel and that's one reason why you should share this video and invite your friends and tell them to come hang out with us here on the Second Street Marvel because we're going to be doing those giveaways and to get entered got to be subscribed we've got to hit 500 subscribers and you have to make sure to comment in the videos but uh that's all i have for this video video today folks thank you all so much for tuning into the second street marvel and if there's any other kind of topics that you would like me to discuss here on the morning movie chat feel free to reach out to me on youtube twitter uh well on youtube you'd have to you can leave any of the comments but also you know there's you can go in the about section you can find uh links to my twitter uh facebook instagram any of those different ways even my email where you can reach out to me and you know let me know any of the topics that you would like me to discuss here on the show um i do great Greatly appreciate all you guys' feedback and all of your suggestions. And like I said, if you have other people out there who you think would be a good fit to come on the show and discuss some of these movies, somebody who you think is a good personality or even knowledgeable about films, please let me know and I'll be happy to reach out to them and hopefully bring them onto the show. Again, make sure you tune in tomorrow uh, as we will have Stevie J's reviews as we are going to have another great, another great uh, conversation about some movies and films. 
But uh, you all have a very good day. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Str Second Street Marvel, and we will see you in the next video. Later. Oh, no. It didn't change. All right. Later. <laughs>